We travelled a fair bit, but Italy, well, that's never been on our radar strangely enough. Despite Si's love of history, time to do Italy at long last. Well, can you really do Italy on a cruise? We spent a week aboard Piano Azzurra to find out. Azura will take us from Malta up the western Italian coast to Lispizia before diverting to Calvi on the island of Corsica before heading to Chiffiki, uh, Chiffiki, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, you know, the port for Rome. Then we head to Naples before returning to Valletta in Malta. So not solely Italy, but we are hoping this is the introduction to Italy we need. So how did we get on? Rolante or O Mio Dio? Keep watching to find out. So our journey started early with a 5am drive to Heathrow where we boarded our Air Malta flight to Valletta. This three hour flight was easy and at Valletta we collected our cases from the baggage belt, walked outside to give our cases to a waiting porter, then we boarded a coach who drove us into the city to the cruise check-in. P&O use a cool vault built into the city walls for check-in and before long you are heading out onto the dock through security and a duty free shop towards the ship. We boarded late afternoon despite leaving home early. Once aboard we went straight to our master station, got our boarding passes scanned and then headed to our cabin. This time we had booked a balcony cabin on deck 12 thanks to our brilliant travel agent Lucy. Thanks Lucy. Having only eaten breakfast and bags of sweets we were eager to find food and drink. But which should we prioritise? Well cocktails of course. Ok the buffet was shut but white rum based drinks seemed nutritious enough for the time being any rate. So when the buffet did eventually open, we scoffed a good plate full of food and stuffed our bellies before heading back to our cabin. So Sai, how are you feeling about Azura? So it's lovely to be back on board Azura here in Valletta. It's really hot, it's still about 29, 28 degrees here. Lovely to be able to sit out on the balcony. We've sailed on Azura before, so we arrived quite late in the afternoon, but there's no real need to go and explore the ship. We kind of know our way around. So on tonight, it looks like we've got a movie up on the top deck. We've got the Chronicles of Narnia movie on the top deck. There's a TV theme tunes quiz down in the Brodie's pub. There's a few bands playing around the ship as well. Um, but the ship is going to be late leaving port. We've been told that Captain Dillon announcement said that one of the flights from the UK is arriving late. And because there's a fireworks display apparently here in Valletta, we're going to be barred from departing Valletta for quite some time. Which doesn't mean, of course, that we could sit here and enjoy the fireworks. So we're looking forward to that later on. In the meantime, got unpacked, enjoy a beer, and enjoy the sunshine and the heat and the evening sunset. Cheers. Fireworks, that sounds fun. But first, time to reacquaint ourselves with this nine-year-old ship that we last sailed on 16 months ago. We wandered around and grabbed some drinks. Live music featured in most of the bars. A nice walk on the promenade deck was a highlight for us and on the Valletta Quayside, local dancers performed for diners and cruise passengers alike. Just wonderful. Okay, fireworks time. And we headed back to the cabin and waited patiently on our balcony. Um. That's a loud bang, but can't see anything. Okay, we are on the wrong side of the ship to see the fireworks. Drinks in the fridge, and we headed up to the top deck to watch the show, and wow, it was a wonderful display over the harbour. So those drinks in the fridge? Okay then, and we polished them off as we sailed away after the fireworks had finished. We hadn't had time to explore Valletta sadly, but we know it's a magical place and we'll be back here in a couple of months time for a special Maltese adventure. Sailing away was wonderful and we soon headed out into the Mediterranean towards Italy and our adventure had begun in style. Day 2 started with a cup of tea on the balcony before heading up to the buffet for breakfast. This was a sea day and our chance to relax and enjoy the amenities on board. P&O give all passengers one hour free Wi-Fi. The signal was poor in the cabin, so we needed to head to public areas to check in with the family at home. So after this, we headed up to the pool deck. The ship was full, we'd say. Public areas were very busy, but we enjoyed a game of table tennis and got some steps in as we walked around the ship. There was plenty going on. There games, dance classes, bingo, a lecture on art and various kids clubs. 
Deciding to make the most of our balcony, we returned to the cabin and took in some reading. We saw a turtle swim past us. Need to be quicker getting the phone camera ready though. Lunchtime was soon upon us. The ship felt busy on this day and every inch of deck space appeared to be taken, but we grabbed a spot in the buffet and enjoyed a chicken dinner, which was very tasty. Opting for more peace and quiet, we returned to our balcony and enjoyed a brew and got stuck back into our books. The sun came around and the good food, reading and sunshine soon brought on the Zeds, well for Sai anyway, whereas I was desperate to try out my new bottle of after sun. In the evening we freshened up ready for celebration night and we smartened ourselves up just a little. So what's the plan for tonight Sai? Well it's celebration night tonight here on Azura and it is far too hot, it's still 33, 34 degrees out there. There's absolutely no way I'm going in a tux tonight, I mean that would just be too uncomfortable. So I take an effort, waistcoat, tie, shirt, and of course, a nice glass of wine. We're eating in the glass house tonight, so looking forward to that. We ordered some wines before we dined and took in our very fine surroundings. And so, Nettie, what have you got to drink tonight? I've got pink wine. Do you like pink wine? Pink wine, pink wine. I drink pink wine all the time. Thank you, Goldie looking Jane. Yeah. Cheers. Well, the food soon arrived and it was time for our first official foodie review. Oh, Nettie, how's your food? Absolutely delicious. What have we got? Um, I've just gone in, um, I've got the surf and turf. Yeah. I've got the garlic corn. So tasty. Really delicious. I've tried the ribeye steak. Um, melt in your mouth. Really tasty. And I've tried some of the onion rings. Really crispy. I would really recommend this. Really it's, good. It's good value as well. It's not expensive either. Not, not expensive, no. And dietary requirements all. Yeah? They have been, yeah, yeah. especially for you. Black pepper. Absolutely, yeah. smart. <laughs> All right, well, Fantastic. thumbs up from us. Clean plates and the food was delicious. Space for pudding, eh? So, we've gone for pudding, yeah? Yeah. What have we got? Right, we've ordered the, um, it's the British Retro Trio, and we've got the, sorry, I've just got to refer to the menu. We've got the Rosehip Arctic Roll. We've got the Bailey's Chocolate Truffle Tea Cake. And then we've got the Jammy Dodger cornflake tart. So you got room for this? Not really, but it looks amazing. <laughs> we'll tuck it. We shared the puddings, which disappeared very, very quickly. And the judges' scores are in. So let's start with the rose hip arctic roll with pink champagne rhubarb compote. What did you think of that? Right. Well, the rhubarb compote was very tasty. The actual arctic roll. Mm, I don't think it had too much flavour to be fair. Out of five? Um, out of five, I'd say two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, okay. I, I'll give that three. It was alright, but it was just about to roll. Right, yeah. Okay, moving on now. The Bailey's Chocolate Truffle Tea Cake. Well, I really like that. That was, it had lots of Bailey's flavour. Um, really strong chocolatey flavour. I would say probably four. Okay, I agree with that. It was a good, solid four. It was very chocolatey. Yeah. And last but not least, the Jammy Dodger Corn Flake Tart with custard. Well, I love that. Um, I know you didn't agree because the custard was cold. Yeah, the cold custard was a the traffic feature. <laughs> um, I really like that. It reminded me of um, the corn flake cake that my mum used to make when I was um, when I was a child. Um, so it brought back loads of memories from that. Of course. Um, it was. I loved it. It was really good. I would say five. Four for me because it gets a point deduction for cold custard. Cold custard, who'd have thought? You have that in, you have that in trifles. Anyway, Glass House <laughs> has been a good experience, yeah? It was, yeah. Cool. Really nice. Then we moseyed our way up to our favourite bar on Azura, the wonderful Planet Bar. Peaceful and chilled, this is a great space with views across the aft of the ship. Some more smooth wines too. We headed then down into the Manhattan Bar for comedian Steve Terry. A family friendly routine for an early evening show and plenty of smiles and chuckles too. Then out onto the promenade deck. We just missed the sunset but the residual light across the nearby island of Corsica was spellbinding. And this was a lovely moment to grab a few photos and many passengers took advantage of this, helped by the friendly crew. We mooched around the various venues and most passengers seemed to have made an effort to dress up. With an early start ahead of us in the morning, we didn't make this a late night, but the wine had flowed nicely and our dreams were sweet. So tomorrow we would set foot in Italy and we were getting excited. So why not check out our next video in this series where we'll explore the fantastic cities of Pisa and Florence. Thanks for watching.
Welcome to part 2 of our adventures to try and discover the wonders of Italy on Piano Azura. In part 1 we'd flown to Valletta in Malta where we reacquainted ourselves with this brilliant ship before watching the fireworks and sailing north into the Mediterranean. We then had a very lazy sea day but had enjoyed some wonderful dining in the evening which was celebration night on board. So it was now day 3 and we had arrived in the Italian port of Vespasia and to get our immersion into the Italian culture we had put our trust in P&O and booked one of their excursions. An early breakfast and we watched the ship moor up in the port of Vespasia. We disembarked and were directed to our waiting coach. So where are we going, Si? Well, we're doing the Pisa and Florence on your own excursion. It's been a bit chaotic getting off so far. Apparently we're supposed to have stickers, like none. So I'm sure will be fine. Just we'll have a good time. We'll have a weird day. <laughs> See you later. Greeted by our guide Maria, we were soon speeding off towards Pisa, and after one hour we were parked in a large coach park and began following Maria into the city who was holding aloft a placard indicating our coach number. It was a 15 minute walk in blistering heat into Pisa, passing by stores and cellars. Lots of tours were making their way as we were, and in one amusing and somewhat alarming moment, one of the other guys began shouting and pointing to people sat on a bench, saying they were pickpockets. The people sat on the bench seemed unflustered and simply sat there laughing at us. Pisa is a walled city, and tourists enter through the city wall gate to view what we've all come for, the magnificent cathedral, and of course the leaning tower. And boy does it lean. Quite a sight, but a more fun sight is the hordes of tourists striking poses to keep the tower from toppling. Be rude not to, I suppose. Strike a pose, Neddy. We had one hour in Pisa to explore on our own. We snapped loads of pics of the tower and then headed down into the city past shops and cafes. And hang on, a supermarket? Can't resist a supermarket. And in this blistering 37 degree heat, we just had to load up our backpacks with bottles of drink, bags of crisps, and lots and lots of sweets, of course. Mooching around Pisa was a delight. Souvenirs brought, we visited a beautiful church and the main city square where a cute dog was taking a shower in one of the fountains. We really do need to cool down. It's 30 plus degrees, maybe 35, 36. How's the gelato? Oh, that's amazing. It's actually, it's actually melting really quickly. Um, but I went for the cherry flavour and it's absolutely out of this world. Yum, yum, yum. Yay. Enjoy. This was a delicious gelato, but you had to eat it quick or it would end up down your arm, or even worse, on the floor. This time in Pisa had flown past, and before long we were walking back to our coach. Back on board we rehydrated and sped across the mountains towards Florence. After a further hour and a quarter we arrived in Florence. The coach parked outside the main city area. Our guide Maria then led the group on another 15 minute walk into the city centre. Heat in Florence was even more oppressive, edging at times close to 40 degrees. Our guide led us to the Piazza Santa Croce. This was to be our meeting point three and a half hours later on. But randomly before we were dispersed she dragged us into a jeweller's and we had to endure an unexpected five minutes of sales pitch from the staff within. Maria said P&O insisted she did this. We don't know if this is true but we endured it and soon dispersed into this magnificent and beautiful city. The two main attractions are the marvel that is Cathedral del Duomo and Michelangelo's David. It quickly became clear these are tourist traps with tickets needing to be booked in advance if you don't want to wait in exceptionally long queues. Cooks explore, so that's exactly what we decided to do, and we wandered through the maze of narrow streets and took in parts of the city that weren't on the tourist map provided. Among the highlights was the leather market, a long street that is partly covered and filled with market traders selling incredible leather goods. But our favourite was the central market with its upper floor street food court. This was some place and quite a find. It was recommended by Time Out magazine as a must-do for foodies. That's enough to send us there then. It did not disappoint. There was so much interesting food to choose from. So what have you got there, Si? So where are we, Si? Well, we're in central Florence. We're in the central market in Florence. It's an amazing place. There's all the stalls open downstairs. Great leather market. Here it's a street food court. An amazing selection of foods. We've got to have some bacon fries with cheese on the floor and a tasty to see in a beer to wash it down. Absolutely love this place. What a place. So, what you got for now? I've got the, for the authentic margarita pizza. Ooh, it looks when marvelous. It's Italy, you've got the it. it looks great. Ooh, I love that. Ooh. 
The food was simply delicious and we watched the pizza being lovingly prepared and when it arrived it lasted only a few minutes and was washed down by fine local beer. What a delight this was and in this city of art and culture we had found culture just it wasn't renaissance art and architecture but was more of a stuff your face and drink beer culture. Okay we had better do something a bit more highbrow and a beautiful church is always good for the soul so we headed into the church of Santa Maria Novella. This cost seven euros fifty to enter and was beyond beautiful inside. Candles lit for lost loved ones, we began exploring this gorgeous church complex. And wow, the frescoes and restored works of art were breathtaking. Much of this artwork dates from the 14th and 16th centuries and is in amazing condition and clearly lovingly cared for. It really was stunning and it would have been easy to spend a couple of hours in here just admiring the beauty all around you. It was a place with a peaceful atmosphere and somewhere where you could just sit and ponder. We left and again made our way around the winding streets of this medieval city. We made our way along the river bag towards the medieval Ponte Vecchio Bridge, which still has its shops built onto the bridge structure. All these shops are jewellers, strangely enough. We were soon realising that Florence is a city that quickly drains your bank account. Time was slipping past and we had at this stage given up on seeing statues of naked men, but right on cue we found ourselves at the piazza outside the Palazzo Vecchio, more than enough marble nudity for one day in any case. We made it back to our meeting point just in time for a cold drink in a nice little cafe. So guys, how has your trip to Florence been? We've come to the end of our trip to Florence and it's really been hot hasn't it? Gosh, it's been 37 degrees today and my fan has been a lifesaver for me but it's finally died. It's a beautiful city, I mean, just the architecture and the vibe. It's very busy, it's also quite expensive as well. Yeah, uh, and gone all... through quite a few pennies today, haven't we? Yeah, there's a lot to do, a lot to see. We didn't get to see half of the things that they used to see. We didn't see the Michelangelo's baby. No. And we didn't manage to get inside the Duomo. The we ran out of time, didn't we? We just ran out of time, but we did yeah. find a very, very good food market. <sighs> I think that was that amazing. Was amazing, yeah. If you're a foodie, the central market in Florence. Definitely a place to go, it's isn't it? It's a place it? to go. <laughs> really, really good. Anyway, we're just waiting for our guide to head us back to the bus and then we're head off back to the ship. We walked a further 15 minutes back to the coach and soon we were on the two hour trip back to La Spezia and back aboard Azura. Back aboard, we showered and changed before grabbing a bike from the buffet, then a wander around the ship, some live music before retiring to our favourite planet bar, a glass of wine and a cocktail whilst enjoying some tunes from a classy pianist. Our introduction to Italy had been all we'd hoped for. It had been a brilliant day, if a little exhausting, and tomorrow we were docking in the port of Calvi on the island of Corsica. This wasn't the originally planned stop and was a bit of an unknown for us. All we did know was that it was a tender port, so why not join us in the next video in this series to see what surprises lay in store for us in this paradise home to millionaires and legionnaires. Welcome back to part 3 of our adventures on Pino Azura to see if we can do Italy on a cruise. And so far we've sailed out to Valletta in Malta, enjoyed a sea day, grabbed the essential Instagram photo in Pisa and dodged most of the cultural sites in Florence, opting to fill our bellies with beer and great local food instead. So now it was day 4 of this adventure and Azura was taking a short break from Italy and headed towards the French island of Corsica. We woke to the most incredible sunrise over the mountains. We were loving our balcony cabin. This was a tender port and only the ship's lifeboats were being used. With the ship rammed to the gunnels, we wondered how this day would pan out and at what time we'd get ashore. First breakfast and all the ship's announcements warned those wanting to explore ashore independently to wait until they announced the tenders were quiet with plenty of spaces. This announcement came a lot earlier than they had suggested, but it seemed that everyone was heeding their warnings and this announcement caused a rather chaotic queuing snaking around the atrium just to get a ticket for the tender boat. Once we had gathered our ticket from the Meridian restaurant, we waited to be called for the tender ashore. It was only a short wait before we boarded and headed ashore, and we got ashore about 11am, much later than anticipated with the last tender back at 5pm, but this was enough time to enjoy the pretty port of Calvi, and what a pleasant surprise Calvi provided. This town is split into three distinct areas for visitors to explore. First off, there is the impressive medieval citadel perched atop a cliff overlooking the bay, and we chose to explore this first. From the tender dock, we climbed up towards the citadel, and you're soon greeted by an impressive and moving war memorial. 
and this is a very poignant reminder that this island has been fought over many times over the centuries. Continuing to climb into the citadel walls, you quickly realise this remains a residential area and you can wander the maze of twisting narrow streets and alleyways. This was a delight to explore and wonderful views across the bay would frequently appear. There are bars and cafes to sit and soak it up too. We also found our way into a beautiful church sat centrally in the citadel. It was lovely just to sit and soak up the atmosphere in this beautiful and simple place. And luckily, immediately opposite the church was an ice cream shop. Mmm, be rude not to. And this ice cream helped cool us down before we continued our way around the citadel. How are you both finding Calvi, guys? Wow. What a place the Calvi is. Hello. This is a find, isn't it? <laughs> it is certainly a find. And this is why we do cruises, because you find places like this, and this is certainly a place to come back to. It's stunning. Absolutely stunning. It's gorgeous. This wasn't the original port on the itinerary. We were supposed to be down at Ejaccio, um, but the port changed, and we're up at Calvi to tend the port. It's been a bit of a hassle getting off, but we're here, and it's beautiful. We've been up in the Citadel, gorgeous. lovely medieval fortress, uh, narrow streets, bars, cafes, old church, ice cream, of course. <laughs> and I'm hoping to dip my little toe into the sea later on. Let's see if we can capture that. Yeah. yeah really, <laughs> this place is utterly gorgeous, utterly gorgeous. At any rate, we're going to go and explore the rest of the Citadel and then make our way down to the Maytown area and see if Annette gets the paddle. Yay! It's hot enough to, anyway. What is it, the temperature today? Oh, it's over 35, yeah. isn't it? Over, well over 35. Definitely. <laughs> so we continued to walk around the Citadel walls and headed back to the main town area. This main town area is the second area for the cruise passengers to explore and the three packed streets are filled with bars and cafes and souvenir shops and are really bustling and lively and brilliant to mooch around too. Souvenir hunting time! Fridge magnets and hats brought, it was time to find somewhere to grab a drink. So we walked along the gorgeous harbour front area and there was a lot of choice with multiple restaurants all trying to lure you in for a bite of lunch. We had a plan though to have a beer on the nearby beach and the beach area is the third area for the cruise passengers to explore and it's just a 10 minute walk from the main town to the start of Calvi's extensive expanse of sandy beaches. We wandered down the beaches and these were packed with people enjoying the warm shallow waters. Not much space to sit though at this end. Keep walking and let's try the beach bars. However, we soon found that unless we were dining, these beach bars didn't seem to want our custom, sadly. So just behind the beach is an area with hotels and holiday apartments, and these were serviced by a lovely little market and a further range of bars and restaurants that seemed more than happy to serve us a beer. So we sat and chilled and enjoyed a local beer. So refreshing. Afterwards, we grabbed a cake and some soft drinks for the walk back to town. What you got, Nettie? I went for a vanilla eclair. All right, from the little market over there, it's quite nice to me. They were yeah, friendly, weren't they? Really nice, and this is delicious. Yum, yum, yum. Mmm. <laughs> what have you got there, Sai? Um, like a chocolate uh, moussey thing with nougat over the top. And it's very, very tasty, but it's going to melt very fast. Eat it then, quick. And so we toddled off back into the main town area where we took the opportunity to stock up on soft drinks and bags of sweets in preparation for tomorrow's trip into Rome. Deciding we ought to head back to the ship, we were greeted with rather long queues for the tender. We eventually bit the bullet and joined the queue. The heat was a near 37 degrees and this was an uncomfortable 30 minute wait in direct sunlight as the queue slowly moved us towards the tender boats. Friendly local fishermen manning the fish market stores were kindly spraying water hoses to help cool passengers in the queue and this was most welcome and somewhat amusing. And at the front of the queue, P&O staff were handing out cold wet face towels as well as glasses of water. Once back aboard the tender, we soon found ourselves back aboard Azura and back in our cabin. We enjoyed a cup of tea and took the opportunity to shower and freshen up. Then time to dine and we grabbed a bite to eat before hitting Brody's pub and the adjacent casino. We had some fun on the slot machines. We're such a sucker for a fruit machine. No surprises, we left the casino poorer than when we had entered. Next, we hit the Playhouse Theatre to see Rocks UK, a female trio who belt out cheesy rock ballads. They're unlikely to head download, but if you like to sing into your hairbrush at home, then this was a performance for you. An early start awaited in the morning, and in a not very rock and roll style, we grabbed an early night because tomorrow we were in Chivita Vecchia and we were going to make our first ever visit to Rome. And when in Rome... Thank you for watching. See you in our next video.
Welcome to part 4 of our Italian adventures on Piano Azura, and today was day 5 and saw us dock in the exceptionally busy port of Civita Vecchia. We saw 6 ships at berth and a 2 further moored out to sea. It was going to be a long and busy day. We had wimped out on the idea of doing Rome under our own steam by taking the train from Civita Vecchia, and instead we booked a last minute piano excursion called Rome on your own. So we scoffed breakfast super fast and disembarked to get on board our coach. It was a pleasant 90 minute ride into the city of Rome. Our guide Angela distributed city maps and prepared us for what to expect. The coach dropped us immediately outside the amazing Colosseum. This really is a magnificent structure, but it was also a throng of tourists all doing gladiatorial combat to get that perfect selfie. So guys, here at long last, what's the plan? Well, we made it. We've actually got here to the Colosseum at last. Amazing, we've been trying to do this for a long time yeah. and uh, really pleased we've got here and the Colosseum looks spectacular, absolutely wow. wow. Um, we've got just under six hours here, about five and a half hours here and our first time in Rome. Uh, lots to do, lots to see, so we're going to try and do it on foot, although we might regret that in this heat. See how we I get think on. we're probably going to go out on foot and maybe come back on the metro, maybe. Yeah, we'll try the metro as a back stop. Or the bus, it's just not for us. Yeah. All right, see how we get on. Bye. Getting inside the Colosseum wasn't possible without booking in advance or paying extra for skip the line tickets, which was a real shame. Even the forum ruins are no longer free to get in with the game tickets needed for this. We had five and a half hours to explore the city and we decided that we needed to decide which attractions we would try and just fit in into the time that we had. Our first waypoint was the Pantheon and we chose to walk from the Colosseum into the city. This was a hot and sweaty half hour walk which took us past plentiful ruins and the impressive monument to Victor Emmanuel. We soon found ourselves navigating through the maze of Rome's pretty back streets all the way to the Piazza of St Ignatius with its picturesque church. Then it was a short walk down to one of the best preserved Roman buildings in the entire world, the impressive Pantheon. Originally a Roman temple, it has remained in ceremonial use throughout history and today is still a working Catholic church. Getting inside costs €5 Euros, and tickets can be bought online using ticket machines outside in the piazza or using cash at a ticket office. Tickets are timed however and it's best to be aware of that Having bought the tickets from the ticket machines, we entered and soaked up the atmosphere inside this magnificent building. The roof of the Pantheon is said to be the largest unsupported concrete roof in the entire world, and the oculus allows sunlight to pour in and illuminate the many sculptures and frescoes all around. This was some place. Having left in wonder, and with the heat building, it was definitely gelato time, we found a brilliant gelato shop in a nearby street. You had to buy a ticket first before presenting it to the counter and telling the assistant what gelatos you wanted in your cup or cone. So it's gelato time. What have you gone for, Nay? I've gone for a Bailey's ice cream and a lime one. How I've is just it? tried the Bailey's, absolutely delicious. Mm. The gelato was delicious but was melting so fast you had to eat it incredibly quick. Brain freeze time! Deciding that our next destination should be the Trevi Fountain, we set off across the city and we quickly realised how easy it is for time to slip by in Rome, as in every square or courtyard is a monument, obelisk or fountain. Some of the distractions we found included the 6th century obelisk situated in the middle of Piazza di Monte Tutorio. It is 22 metres in height and made of red granite. Dedicated to the sun god, the obelisk originally stood at Heliopolis before being moved to Rome during the reign of the Empire of Augustus, around 10 BC. We also saw the column of Marcus Aurelius located in Piazza Colonia, and this is a striking monument celebrating the Emperor's military victories. Erected in the late 2nd century, it was originally topped with a statue of Marcus Aurelius, but now features a statue of St Paul. There's also lots of distractions to buy souvenirs too, but we finally found our way to the absolutely stunning Trevi Fountain, along with everyone else it seemed. This place was busy, and we mean really busy. It was impossible to get close and from where we could get to, if we could throw three coins into the fountain, we'd probably better try out for a professional baseball team. That said, it was absolutely beautiful. So where next? Well, it's amazing what you'll consider when you are desperate for the loo. And this became our next quest. Rome has a distinct shortage of dustbins and public toilets. Not sure if the two are linked, but the latter was becoming a challenge. Spying a McDonald's, we tried our luck, only to find you needed an access code that's printed on your receipt, or you could 
pay a euro. Noticing the menu boards, we decided to order a bit of lunch and used the code to access the loos. The Italian McDonald's was actually quite nice and we got chatting to a lovely couple who were randomly vlogging their foodie tour of Europe in McDonald's. With time passing by, we said goodbye and headed up to the Spanish Steps. Much less busy than the Trevi Fountain, but this was another beautiful spot and we soaked up the atmosphere and marvelled at the exquisite architecture that is so widely found around the city. And filling water bottles from the many fountains is encouraged in Rome and in this heat this was a real blessing. Time left was disappearing and just as we were deciding where next, Cy received a call from a care service for an elderly relative of his saying he'd activated his panic alarm. All other emergency contacts were not answering. So Sai obviously needed to stop and deal with this, contacting other family members who could help. Help was quickly organised, but this did take the wind out of our sails, so we found a bar and stopped to take in what had just happened and grab a much needed beer. We needed to make our way back to the Colosseum and found ourselves back in time to take in the impressive Constantine Arch, as well as parts of Palatine Hill, before heading back to get on the bus. Well, that's been some adventure. It in, has, certainly. For a place. This definitely fulfilled expectations and obviously we very quickly realised that we just can't do it in a day. So much to see. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Rome is somewhere we will be coming back to. What a place. It's been hard. It's been 36 degrees today. Um, the guide says it's been the hottest um, week of the year um, and it's really, really hot. I'm really grateful for my fan. <laughs> Good value for money that was. Yeah. All right. Well, look, uh, I'm going to head back to ship now. Catch you later. Where had the time gone? We'd done a fraction of what we wanted to, but we'd seen enough to know that we'd like to come back, and we didn't need to be a crack shot at throwing coins at a fountain to work that out. Back on the bus, then back to the ship, and this had been a long and tiring day, with over 20,000 steps notched up in a 36 degree heat. Well, no wonder we made the mistake of resting our heads on the pillow soon after we got back to our cabin and waking up a couple of hours later, we grabbed an evening meal and enjoyed wines and cocktails in our favourite planet bar. Then time to turn in, with another early start awaiting for us in the morning, as we fulfil our lifelong ambitions to explore the wondrous ruins of Pompeii. See you in the next video! Our adventures in Italy had so far seen us wonder at Pisa's Leaning Tower, soak up the culture of Florence and discover the impossibility of exploring Rome in just a few hours. And day six of this cruise saw us dock in Naples, and this gave us the opportunity to get on an excursion to the archaeological ruins of Pompeii. Pre-cruise excursions to Pompeii had sold out quickly, but we'd managed to book onto a trip entitled Pompeii and Naples Through the Lens. The description seemed to promise tours of both Pompeii and Naples with a guide helping you capture the best photos. And whilst it didn't quite work out as described, we did get an enjoyable trip to both places. It was an early bus that whisked us out of Naples on the 30 minute journey to Pompeii. The coach was full and this was a large group for a walking tour. Once at Pompeii we were handed tickets and radios with earpieces. We had arrived before the site officially opened at 9 o'clock but there were already significant queues to get into the site. Well here we are, we're at Pompeii, really excited for this. We're doing a p &O excursion entitled Pompeii and Naples through the lens. So we're not too sure what it involves, although it does seem to be sort of a guided and narrated tour. We've got earpieces in. Uh, we go for about an hour and a half here at Pompeii, and then they're going to drag us into Naples, probably sell us a whole load of stuff, but hopefully we'll get to go around some of the main sites in Naples. I think they changed the name though, I think, because um, they're going around with a, like a selfie thing. So they're saying it's a selfie tour. So. Selfie tour we'll through the lens. Okay. <laughs> we don't know, but we're here at Pompeii, it's something we want to do, so um, we're looking forward to this. Definitely. We then went on a narrated walking tour of parts of the site, including the gladiatorial training area, the theatres, houses and bakeries, and the baths, as well as the forum area. Sadly, within the 90 minutes allowed for this tour, we were not able to take in the amphitheatre and several other of the impressive locations, nor visit the museum either. Exploring Pompeii's ruins was brilliant, and we really wanted to stay here longer. It's simply mesmerising to wander these intact Roman streets and think about the tragedy that happened here nearly 2,000 years ago. This tour was running on a tightly timed schedule, but despite not allowing enough time to visit either the amphitheatre or museum, the tour did provide time for us all to sit through a sales pitch for locally made cameo jewellery. Hmm, 
just enough time to buy fridge magnets and some locally made lemon drinks. How much? Cy nearly fainted on the floor and it wasn't due to the heat. How much were those drinks, Nelly? 16 euros. 16 euros? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness me. Oh well, <laughs> let's enjoy it. Well, once I had picked up my teeth off the floor, we headed back to the bus and returned to Naples. Parked up outside the cruise terminal, our guide then led us into the city centre and to the beautiful Galleria in the heart of the city shopping area. We were told that we had one hour to do shopping and eat before returning for a narrated walking tour of the city centre. The large group scattered and we decided we needed to find food. So Si, what have you ordered? Well, I'm in Naples so it's got a big pizza and you've ordered something quite strange. What have you ordered? Um, it's I think called um, Pete's Brick. Looks interesting. Anyway, we'll have a look at that when it comes up. But we've Busy morning, we've had a whistle stop all around Pompeii. It's not there long enough, if we're really honest, but enjoyed it all the same. Always wanted to go there. Looks like we're going to get like one hour's walking tour here in Naples. Um, this will be interesting. We've got a guy who's chatting in our ears, taking us around, showing us the main sites in the sort of city centre. So, enjoying that. We're just waiting for our food now. This was a busy street food outlet in the heart of Naples and we couldn't wait to taste the food that we'd ordered. It took 20 minutes for our food to be prepared and we found a step in a nearby street to scoff our feast. They're glamorous, eh? And we've just ordered some pizza and uh, from a street food seller in uh, Naples here. Anyway, foodie review time, Nettie, what do you think? I've got this thing called a pizza fritter. Um, and there it is. It's, the dough is really tasty. It's like a sort of fried dough. Um, inside it's got like sort of cheese, tomato, um, and bits of little ham pieces. Yeah, very different. It could do with a, probably a bit more flavour. It's fine. fairly fairly bland. Okay. Um, it's quite bland. The, the filling, I would say. Wow. Yeah. Harsh from you. That. <laughs> out of five. Um, I'd say three out of five. Okay, three out of five. Yeah. I had the Mariana pizza, or oh, Mariara pizza, which is um, it's lots of tomato, some basil, some oregano, and some garlic in there. They really went overboard with the tomato, like just dripping out everywhere. But it was quite tasty, but it was a bit like a margarita without the cheese, really. Um, I'm going to give it also a three out of five. We returned to the gallery and met up with the group. We then embarked on a one hour walking tour with our guide struggling to make herself heard as many of the group's radios were failing. Sites taken in on the tour included the Cassiopeia Fountain, the Royal Palace of Naples, unfortunately we couldn't go inside, the Piazza del Plebiscito, the Venus in Rags modern sculpture and Castle Novo and again we couldn't go inside unfortunately. So we didn't explore inside anywhere but the shops. Then we returned to the port and made our way on board the ship. This was the only port where we needed to show our passport or a copy of our passport to board the ship. One final selfie with Vesuvius in the background then back on board Azura for some much needed chilling time on our balcony. This night was the second celebration night of the cruise and was poorly supported by the passengers with many opting for a more casual dress code. Our evening took in a meal before hitting the Brodie's pub. We wanted to catch the sunsets as we sailed out past the Isles of Capri and Ischia and wow was this a spectacle. Taking in the show in the Playhouse Theatre was our next mission. There have been very few Broadway-style shows on this cruise, much to Nettie's disappointment, but she's really looking forward to this one and we grabbed the seat nice and early to ensure we get a space. Sadly, we weren't allowed to film any of it. Hmm. So here's our reviews of Electric Avenue. So we've just come out of the Playhouse Theatre to see the headliners. They screen do Electric Avenue and they were pretty explicit that we couldn't record any footage of the show whatsoever. They were pretty mm. strict about that. So we'll have to do one of our reviews. So, Nessie, uh, what was the show all about? Uh, it was about 1980 music um, and it was pretty good, actually. I really enjoyed it. It was, um, they were very good singers, good dancing. They were, they kept on flow. And it was just, um, yeah, really good. And it was a lot of my favourite um, songs as well from the 1980s. So as our show aficionado, you would rate this show, would you? Yeah, I would rate it, yeah. Okay, scores out of five? Very good. I'd say five out of five. I really enjoyed it. That's high praise mm. indeed. Okay, yeah. thanks very much. And now for the grumpy one. Okay, right. Okay, so I am known for being the grumpy one when it comes to these sorts of things. And I better sort of stay in character. 
for that. Uh, it really wasn't my kind of thing, very honest. Uh, I'm just it really, never is. I'm just really glad the 80s weren't at all like that. Uh, it did trouble me a little bit that this modern generation interpreted the 80s in that way. It definitely wasn't like that. I don't remember it being anything like that at all. But very talented, just not my thing. Don't listen to him. It was good. Afterwards, we chilled in the glass house and drank good wines before turning in. That had been some day, and we sat there reflecting on our wonderful experiences in Italy, plotting ways to come back. Day seven, and we were sailing back to Valletta, and this was a day at sea. So no rush to get up early then, unless you want to see the sunrise that is. We've loved having our balcony cabin, and today we were determined to make the most of it again. So some more sleep and a late breakfast. Far out at sea, the drop in temperature was noticeable and welcoming. Still warm and probably high 20s rather than high 30s though. We took the opportunity to read and catch up with downloaded TV shows. The day flew past and we said thank you to our brilliant cabin steward Peter and then grabbed a bite of lunch. More slobbing in the afternoon with the occasional stroll around the decks to stretch our legs. A deck barbecue was underway and live music and movies were playing. Nettie wanted to hide the last of her three cruise ducks that she brought with her. Hmm, where should we hide them? Then some more reading and time to pack our cases. We had a late afternoon flight home tomorrow and we were scanning all the information provided to try and work out if we could squeeze in a few hours in Valletta in the morning. In the evening we returned to our favourite planet bar for final cocktails and wines. Then we headed to the main dining room for a final evening meal. We'd been allocated late dining by P&O and this had meant that we hadn't used this excellent dining room as much as we'd liked. But the food here and across the ship had been good all cruise and tonight was no exception. How's it? Nanny, how's it going? Yeah, I've got these tiger prawns, garlic tiger prawns with ozone, smartly ozone, pasta and some vegetables. But the prawns, green flavour, really nice. Yeah, Looks really good. Enjoyed. Yeah, it's really tasty. Out of five? From four. Cool. Well, Si, how's the steak? Really good, actually. Um, we had a steak uh, with Bernays sauce in the glass house and that cost an extra £10.50. This is included in the fare. It's not quite as fancy, there's no onion rings and stuff with it, but it tastes absolutely wonderful. Really good steak, really well cooked, and uh, yeah, Bernays sauce is, is spot on. Absolutely good. At five, definitely five for me. And also tonight was the night that we got to say thank you to all of the excellent catering staff and waiting staff who'd done P&O so proud throughout the entire holiday. So there had been only one thing missing from our Italian cruise holiday and we were about to put that right. Silent disco time! And up on the deck in the warm sea air and moonlight we discovered again what a skinful of wine and some cheesy tunes does to people on a cruise ship, even the younger generations too perfect way to end our week aboard Azura. Day 8 was our day to return home, but the timing of our flight home meant that we could still squeeze in a few hours in Valletta in the morning. Opting for this, we got off the ship early, picked up one of the excellent walking maps and walked into the city. We'd walked some of the two suggested walking routes on our previous visits to Valletta and we we're planning to return here later in the year. So we opted to tick off some of the sites we'd missed on our first visit. This included the ever so impressive Triton Fountain, the Piazza de Jean de Valette, the Prime Minister's House and the Independent Square where we saw the flag being raised. We also took in the beautiful Lower Baraka Gardens with its stunning views across the harbour and breakwater. Valletta is a great city to explore. Its medieval streets are filled with interesting locations as well as great bars and restaurants. We found some places we will visit on our return here, including a lovely street food market where we supped some refreshing homemade lemonade before heading out to do some shopping for snacks for the way home. Hang on Si, what have you bought there? What have you gone for Si? A gelato a day keeps the doctor away, that's my favourite saying of the holiday. And obviously I've gone for lemon or lemon. And it's very yellow but also very lemony. What a surprise, you've gone for lemon. <laughs> Our time ashore was running out before we had to be back aboard Azura and await our instruction to get aboard the coach that transferred us to the airport. However, our airport experience was somewhat chaotic as the short time between dropping us off at the airport and also the sheer volume of passengers trying to check in luggage meant that the airport experience was just a little stressful, but we were soon high in the sky and heading back to Blighty. 
think. And that was it. Italy done. Really? So we wanted to see if we could do Italy on this cruise. And we have to say, we loved our time in the elegant Italian cities we visited. We saw lots of things we wanted to see, but like most cruises, this holiday only allowed you the briefest of glimpses into your destinations. But we saw enough to know that we couldn't do justice to the history, culture and friendly people we had encountered in just this week. There is so much to explore and experience. We will plan, of course, to come back and do more of this great country. Italy, you're not done yet. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.